Hi, I'm the Lockpicking Cuba, and in this video I'm going to have a look at some IFAM magnetic padlocks. So I don't know if you've seen these before, they're pretty normal padlocks, but obviously no keyway. The key is this, which is a magnet, or as you'll see it's a set of magnets, and you just place it along here, and that releases the shackle. And just to prove that it's really a key, it won't open this one, and it won't open this one. The reason I got three was just to check <laughs> that the keys would work on the correct padlock, but not the wrong padlock. Doesn't work on that one, doesn't work on that one. Okay, all very well, but how do these work? So I found somebody uh, on eBay who had taken the uh, back off one of these and was selling it, so I decided to buy it. And here it is, and I wanted to show you how this works. So. First of all, um, the main mechanism is that we have this bar here. So this bar comes down here and that blocks the shackle from lifting up. So when I try and pull the shackle, you can see it hits against that bar and nothing happens. Now, the reason that that bar won't move is because this bar can't go upwards. If this bar could be pushed upwards, then the shackle could slide past it. But at the moment, it's prevented from moving upwards by these little pins down here. Okay, so let's see what happens when I take the magnetic key and apply it to the lock. Well, you can't really see very much happening. And if you look very, very carefully, you can see what's happening. It's just reorienting those pins. And I'll show you in a second why that matters. But what's happening is now when I pull on this, it shifts this bar upwards. And the reason it can shift that bar upwards is because there are some holes in this bar which now line up with the pins, so the pins can slot into those holes and the bar can move upwards. So let's have a little bit of a closer look and see why that works. So I'm just going to tip everything out of here. So the first thing to notice is that this is um, sprung, so if you release it, it just goes upwards. And when we put it back under the pressure of the sprung shackle, uh, it goes back down. Okay, but what's happening here? So Clearly, the idea is that this piece of metal here needs to move in that direction in order to allow uh, the arm of the shackle to come past it. And if we look closely in here, you can see these little holes. And if we could get those pins to go into the holes, then it would work. So I could do it if I had access to the internals. I could do it like this. I could take a pair of pliers and I can line each hole up, each pin up with its hole. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. But eventually I can get it to move. And this is the unlocked position now. But as soon as I pull it back to the locked position, those pins wobble about just slightly. Now they won't go into the holes. It seems amazing to me, to be honest, that this is the basis on which you can build a lock, but it really does seem to work very well. So let's see what happens when I take the magnet and I put it against those pins. So first of all, they all move into slightly different positions. So the reason for this is that inside this key, there's a set of four magnets, and they've been positioned in just the right places so that these pins get attracted, because they're, they're not magnets, but they're ferrous uh, metal, so they get attracted by the little magnets in here to the appropriate end of the uh, little hexagons that we see there. Um, and that means that just as happened when I uh, use the pliers, the pins line up with the holes, they go into the holes, and then this whole thing can move that way a little bit. Now notice if I misalign the key slightly, it doesn't work. And so this is why on the padlock itself we have this key-shaped ridge, so the key goes into exactly the right position, because otherwise it won't work or it'll be very fiddly. Okay, so I'm just going to take this apart one step further to show you. So the pins are sort of double-ended and they go through this piece of copper, which I guess is just designed to be a pivot for them. But the important thing is these holes. So the position of these holes matches up with the position of the little magnets in the key. And that ensures that these pins get pulled into the right position so they can slot in there. Okay, so that's how the padlock works. But what about the key? Well, luckily I have one here where the insides are exposed. So you can see the little black magnets each in their own positions, and they're all set into these kind of flower shapes with six positions which correspond to these hexagonal shapes in the uh, 
uh, inside of the padlock here. Um, and the positions of these magnets correspond, although they're sort of opposite, to the positions of the holes. And the reason that makes sense is because you want to attract one end of the pin to here, which means the other end of the pin is going to go the opposite way. So you can see, for example, this hole is at the sort of, um, well, if we call that the west position, then this one's in kind of the east position. Um, yeah, not quite because they're hexagons, but you see what I mean. They're sort of in the opposite position. And this one's sort of up high, and this one's down low, up high and to the right, down low to the left, right up at the top and right down at the bottom, and then down bottom left, and that one's in the top right. So you can see how the positions of these magnets uh, correspond to where we want the pins to go in here to ensure that the lock can open. So let's just put all this back together again. This goes in here. This goes in here. And so now that's locked. Put the key there and see it gets put in automatically into the right position. It's the only place it'll go. And then the padlock opens. So there we go. I thought that was a rather lovely little padlock. I've been thinking about how you would go about picking it. And if you had the key, then of course you could use that to figure out the positions of the magnets. Um, I mean, you can do that for um, impressioning one of these magnetic keys. But if you don't have a key at all and you just have the lock, I don't know, I'm not sure how you'd go about doing it other than trying all of the positions. Um, there's only six to the four possible keys, so you're not really gonna try all of them. So I don't know, um, I think uh, at least from the point of view of um, picking in any meaningful sense, I think it would be actually pretty secure. Uh, I also wasn't able to shim it, by the way. I, had, I did have a go um, and wasn't able to do it. Um, but you can see why, of course, because what's, ha what's blocking it is not something up here. There's not a bolt coming up here, which you can push out of the way. You'd have to get your shim all the way down here. And even then it wouldn't work because this won't move until these are in the right position. So yeah, I actually think these padlocks, these IFAM magnetic padlocks, are, offer pretty good security, really, for what they are. And more importantly, I think they're kind of an amazing idea. It seems extraordinary to me that anybody thought to try to do this and then actually got it into production. So yeah, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed seeing inside one of these um, rather unique magnetic padlocks. Uh, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.